welcome to our fourth lesson in this series on chemical bonding. In this series, we have used a variety of models to explain how atoms of different elements combined to form compounds. Remember, the overall electrostatic forces between atoms hold substances together. The electrostatic forces contribute to the type of bond present and to the distribution of electrons within the bond. The distribution of electrons affects the overall shape of a molecule or lattice. The shape of a molecule is an important characteristic as it determines many of its physical and chemical properties. For example, the shape of a water molecule gives water many of its unique properties. But water is not the only molecule with a particular shape. Enzymes are special molecules that control the speed of biological reactions in plants and animals. In other words, they act as catalysts in these reactions. Each enzyme has a particular shape, which means that it will fit together with a particular reactant molecule, just like a key fits a particular lock. Without this exact fit, no reaction can take place. In simple molecules formed by two atoms, the shape of the molecule can be determined by looking at the orbital overlaps. However, when more than two atoms combine to form one molecule, we need a better model to help us determine the molecule's shape. In the next two lessons, we will use a model called the VSEPR model. That's quite a mouthful, but you will see that this model is actually quite easy to use and it helps us determine the shapes of almost any molecule. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use the VSEPR model to predict the shape of simple molecules. Now I know you must be quite curious to find out what VSEPR stands for. Well, here goes. The V stands for valence, the S for shell, the E for electron, the P for pair, and R for repulsion. Valence, shell, electron, pair, repulsion. So what does this mean? Well, you should recognize the term valence shell. This refers to the electrons found in the outer energy level of an atom. Electron pair refers to pairs of electrons found in the valence shell. Now you should remember that there are two types of electron pairs. A lone pair, where both electrons come from the same atom, and a bond pair, where the electrons come from different atoms. Repulsion, that's quite easy. We know that objects with the same charge will repel each other. So putting these terms together, we see that the VSEPR model is based on the force of repulsion between the pairs of electrons found in the valence shell. The model uses the idea that electron pairs need to be arranged so that they are as far away from each other as possible. Let's use this idea as we look at our first example. Beryllium chloride BeCl2. Beryllium is in group 2 and so has two valence electrons. Chlorine is in group 7, so each of the chlorine atoms has seven valence electrons. Notice the electronegativity number difference between beryllium and chlorine is 1,5. This tells us that each bond is polar covalent and the electrons in the bond pairs are closer to the chlorine atom than to the beryllium atom found in the center of the molecule. Let's focus on the beryllium atom now. It has two electrons in the valence shell and shares an electron with each of the chlorine atoms to form two single bonds. When drawing the Lewis diagram, you should see that different shapes are possible. You could arrange the two chlorine atoms and the beryllium atom in a straight line, 
or you could arrange these atoms so that the chlorine beryllium chlorine bonds form an angle of less than 180 degrees. If the shape is linear, the molecule will not have two distinctly charged opposite ends. But if the shape of the molecule is not linear but bent, the chlorine end would be negative and the beryllium end would be positively charged. In this case, the molecule would be a dipole. Can you see how the shape of the molecule determines if the molecule is polar or nonpolar? In this case, we cannot say for certain what the shape of the molecule is. Let's apply the VSEPR model to see if it helps us determine the shape of the molecule and so enable us to tell if the molecule is a dipole or not. In the beryllium chloride molecule, we clearly have only two bonding pairs of electrons. These negatively charged electron clouds will try and move as far away from each other as possible. Thus, the VSEPR model predicts that chlorine and beryllium atoms will line up in a straight line. We call this arrangement linear. Can you see that the angle between the nuclei of the chlorine and beryllium atoms is 180 degrees? Using X-rays, chemists can accurately measure the angle between the nuclei and confirm that the VSEPR prediction is correct. A linear arrangement does not only apply to the beryllium chloride molecule, but applies whenever a molecule has only two electron pairs in the valence shell of the central atom. In all such cases, the molecule will have a linear shape. You should also see that even though the beryllium chlorine bond is a polar covalent bond, the molecule does not have two oppositely charged ends. So, the molecule is called a nonpolar molecule. Now let's consider what will happen when we have three electron pairs in the valence shell of a central atom. Can you predict the shape of the molecule using the VSEPR model? Well, we know that each of the bonding pairs of electrons is negatively charged and will be repelled by the other bonding pairs, so they must all get as far away from each other as possible. Let's use three wooden sticks and a ball of clay to make a model. The ball of clay represents the central atom and each wooden stick represents a bonding pair of electrons. Can you see how to arrange these three wooden sticks as far away from each other as possible? Well, if these two are placed at 180 degrees Couldn't the third stick fit in above the other two? The angle between them is not equal, so they are not all as far apart from each other as they could be. If I move the sticks so that the angles between them are equal, they will all be as far from each other as possible. The angles between the sticks are now 120 degrees. Notice these three sticks, which represent the electron pairs, all lie in the same plane. So the shape is either called planar triangular or trigonal planar. Let's apply this idea to a particular molecule. One molecule that has three bond pairs is boron chloride. A good place to start when trying to determine the shape of any molecule is to draw the Lewis diagram. Can you draw the Lewis diagram of boron chloride BCl3? Look here. The boron forms three single bonds with each of the chlorine atoms. These three bond pairs need to be arranged as far away from each other as possible. So, the boron chloride molecule has a trigonal planar shape. Now let's try another example, methane CH4. Carbon is the central atom of this molecule. 
carbon has four electrons in its valence shell and forms four bonds with four different hydrogen atoms. By looking at the Lewis diagram, you can see that there are four bond pairs of electrons around the carbon. So how do you arrange four bond pairs as far away from each other as possible? Perhaps you could try by using four sticks and a ball of clay again. Did you get this as a solution? Well, for a first attempt, that is not too bad, but you do not need to have these four pairs in the same plane to get them as far apart as possible. The angle between these bond pairs can be increased to be greater than 90 degrees. Why don't you try again? This is a three-dimensional arrangement. The four sticks are now as far apart as possible in the shape of a tetrahedral. The angle between each of these bond pairs is exactly the same, 109,5 degrees, so the molecule is symmetrical. I'm sure you agree that it is difficult to draw a 3D shape on a piece of paper. To overcome this difficulty, chemists use dotted lines to show bond pairs going into the paper, a fat wedge to show a bond pair coming out of the paper, and a normal straight line to show a bond pair in the same plane as the paper. Now there are two more shapes that we need to consider molecules that have five bond pairs and molecules that have six bond pairs. Phosphorus fluoride PF5 is a molecule with five bond pairs. When we arrange five pairs of electrons as far apart from each other as possible, it is not possible to find a symmetrical arrangement with equal bond angles. Three pairs of electrons are arranged in one plane, 120 degrees apart, and the other two pairs form above and below this triangular arrangement. A molecule with this arrangement is called trigonal bipyramidal. When we arrange six pairs of electrons as far apart from each other as possible, the shape of the molecule is called octahedral. This is a symmetrical shape where each of the bond pairs is 90 degrees apart. Now that we have determined the five basic molecular shapes, let's review the steps we follow whenever we apply the VSEPR model. The first step is to draw a Lewis diagram of the molecule. Next, count the number of pairs of electrons around the central atom. Then, determine the shape of the molecule, applying the idea that the electron pairs must always be as far away from each other as possible. You will find that if there are two pairs of electrons, the molecule will be linear. If there are three pairs of electrons, the molecule will be trigonal planar. If there are four pairs of electrons, the molecule will be tetrahedral. If there are five pairs of electrons, the molecule will be trigonal bipyramidal. If there are six pairs of electrons, the molecule will be octahedral. Now, see if you can use the VSEPR in your task for today. Determine the shape of the following molecules. Tetrafluoromethane, CF4, Phosphorus 5 chloride, tin 2 chloride. In this lesson, we have looked at examples of molecules where the electron pairs arranged around the central atom are all bond pairs. These bond pairs are all single bonds. However, in many molecules, there are also lone pairs present. In our next lesson, we will look at the effect of lone pairs on molecular shape and also consider the effect of multiple bonds. Yeah.